Uh, I'm very happy to have you here all, and I'm giving the floor to the chair of our first panel session, uh, Dr. Vera Kirchi, who is Assistant Professor at the Department of Visual Culture and Literary Theory. Vera, please welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, so, welcome everybody. Uh, this will be the session of uh, Theatre and Crisis. We have uh, four speakers. Uh, they will give the lectures in 10 uh, to 50 minutes, and after they finish, uh, you will uh, have the possibility to ask questions and uh, to start a short uh, discussion about the uh, papers. So our uh, first uh, speaker is uh, Andrea Erde. Uh, he is the artistic di uh, director of uh, Metanoia Theatre Group. Uh, I think a uh, lot of uh, you saw the performance yesterday, so... We will uh, speak a little bit about uh, it too, but uh, first uh, uh, let's uh, listen to uh, Andrea's uh, thoughts about uh, theatre and crisis. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> um, what do we call theatre nowadays? Theatre is an institution that has a building complex at its disposal in which a number of experts, accountants, PR managers, artistic directors, dramaturgies, technicians, directors, actors, etc., produce theatrical performances through their col co collaborative efforts. These productions either tend to represent the illusion of reality in a realist, naturalist way, or by rejecting this illusion, they openly work with a stylized representation. After several years of experience in the theatrical field, I had to realize that the theatrical apparatus functions as a successful industry, and it is very similar to a kind of industrial work whose exclusive aim is to produce success-oriented performances. In the name of entertainment, or of the cultivation of mind, the real goal is to increase audience numbers and to achieve economic growth. In order to increase the prestige of the institution, they develop the so-called festival pieces, which are usually insignificant, cliché-based performances that tend to win the prices previously ordered to them by cultural policy and critics. An additional important problem might be that the leadership of the theater serves or conforms the, to actual political interests. Creators of performance are thus endangered by these factors, and they might become executioners instead of being creative partners, in case they do not resist. So-called alternative avant-garde physical or any other theatres are no exceptions as all of these have already been abused. The deepening of presence, experimenting, that is the only way of discovery, recognition or development, are all excluded from this way of functioning. The thing that is conventionally defined as theatre thus dominates through its mediocrity. Its season ticket system has just the amount of public life which is necessary to keep its audience, so it has no society shaping power whatsoever. It is dead. The only way of getting out of a dead end is turning back. So, let's just state the question again. What is the origin of theater? What makes its existence legitimate? There is widespread consensus about the idea that theater originates from some kind of a religious cult in which the assembled group praised together the gods. Antique Creek tragedy probably evolved from the orgiastic rites of Dionysius. In the birth of tragedy, each differentiates Predicting artistic principles, the Apollonian, measure, harmony, consciousness, reason, etc., and the Dionysian, rapture, resurrection, 
impetuousness, irrationality, etc. None of the two antagonistic principles can exist without the other, as they both complete and presuppose each other. But Nietzsche argues that the balance of reason and intuition was already upset in antiquity because rationality completely overpowered instinct. In the typology of directing styles, there are examples for these contradicting terms. The regulated and self-conscious Brechtian theater is based on an uh, Apollonian principle, as opposed to the liberating cruelty of Arto's theater. But some theories say that uh, there is another huge difference between the Brechtian and the Artoian theater, namely that the latter was never realized in practice. Arto criticized three factors of Western culture that strongly affected theater, too. Logocentrism, rationalism, individualism. As opposed to Western psychological theater, the theater, the theater of cruelty is the image of a reality that refers rather to an intelligible sphere than to everyday human life. By emptying herself, the actor does not represent anything, but rather gives way to something and uh, begin to exist intensively in the unreputable here and now. She is purely there. The greatest challenge of cruelty is the realization of this pure presence. However, that can only be produced ritually in the non-recurring here and now. One year before his death, Arto said, quote, I should have shed blood through my, through my navel to achieve what I wanted, unquote. Pure presence is ungraspable, indescribable, unexplainable. It slips away, but not without a trace. Derrida likens the special relationship between the Western and Artoian theater to a particular movement in which just like in the case of uh, Hegelian dialectic, the conflict of opposite qualities takes place and consequently, according to Derrida, representational theater carries within its own negation. The theater of cruelty thus is present as a trace in Western theater or as a void in which the non-existing theater has not yet begun but necessarily has to arrive. In a place where it is unexpected, its elementariness reveals itself from time to time. So, Arto considers cruelty as determined as it is nothing else than life. And theater is not an artistic form, but a vital act, a real magical deed that spreads like plague. Pure presence is existing in the category of comprehension and not in that of knowing, both in theatrical and in non-theatrical spheres. Pure presence contains that which we speak about or that which we cannot speak about, as it is beyond words. And it is even operating right now with its accountable absence. The Artoian aim is not dependent on bourgeois or experimental theater as it mobilizes the totality of man and brings transformation rather than relief with itself. And if we consider that, quote unquote, all the world's stage, the above statement becomes even more valid. Real society shaping power like cruelty, always turns up beyond what is generally accepted. This is its contradiction, and this is its elementariness. It does not turn to everyday politics, yet it is not non-political, because pure presence touches upon or even pervades the problems of the present. In, in pure presence, death dies. Thank you for your attention.